Professor Schwartz, when we look at the history of liberalism, if we think of the great thinkers of Locke and, and Mill and uh, Smith, what would they say if they had the possibility to look at the situation in our countries now? They would have lo a lot to say. I should say Mill in one way and Tocqueville in another. Mill, because he tried something impossible, which was to leave a room to open the door to the left and <clears throat> try to have a, an economic system where the workers would have a voice and uh, where capitalism would be uh, less stark and clear as it, as it is. And so he tried to mix uh, good political economy, good economics, with uh, <clears throat> distribution, new distribution of m money, of riches and power. And it hasn't worked. <clears throat> he started this in 1848, and very slowly, we're now in the system where the uh, demands, not of the workers, not of the left, the demands of people who uh, are accustomed to ha have the state uh, give them Good free goods uh, now uh, protest as any any time that you have to cut them. Now Tocqueville was much more on the point because it's true that the uh, liberal democracy as we know it today has no separation of powers that we can speak of. <clears throat> Not only the executive is very strong and uses all sorts of um, of weapons. Uh, such as television, <laughs> and, and uh, as we have today, all sorts of weapons to try and impose its ideas, uh, but also mm, because the powers of the state are not really separate. Uh, the judiciary is half uh, independent. Certainly the chamber and government are not. In some countries, <clears throat> in the United States, the president has to fight the chambers, but doesn't fight it much. And certainly in our democracies, in our parliamentary democracies, government and the chamber or the chambers is the same thing. Mm. So they would say in alarm, I think even Mill would say in alarm, I defend the independence of the individual, but it's not going well. In the case of Tocqueville, quite clearly, <clears throat> as he said, centralization is increasing. Do you think, that, is there any chance that sound ideas uh, will be followed by politicians in the European Union? Well, no. Uh, in the case of the European Union, we see the path that it's taken. Uh, after Covid, <clears throat> they decided to, the, uh, the executive of the European Union, the Commission, have decided to borrow huge amounts of money from the markets in the trillions, in the trillion, and, uh, and then decide how to share it out amongst the different states and even the people and tell them where the economy should go and where society should go. So I think the European Union, on the back of COVID and the previous uh, financial crisis, is clearly going to more centralization and going the, the wrong way from my point of view. And uh, <clears throat> then politicians, well, they are not independent, they can't be. They have the votes coming after a time, so we don't, shouldn't ask them too much. Uh, <clears throat> they are there to get power and try to stay in power. <clears throat> we shouldn't have any much illusions about them. It was Karl Popper who said, we, the point <coughs> of democracy is not to choose the best, but to stop the worst. <laughs> and uh, this is what has to be done. So I think that it's writers, intellectuals, philosophers who are to blame for what is happening and who should have in their hands trying to straighten again our liberal democracies. It's people, it's ideas and people saying we've gone the wrong way because we, the people who tell, who speak about ideas, we, the intellectuals who speak about ideas, haven't done our duty. <laughs>